May Allah help the people of Lebanon. And now we're starting our talk about uh, Beirut port explosion. Next, please. In my introduction, I would say, as you can see in the slide, the, the globe or the world is affected by three pandemics. One of them is democratic pandemic. Second called is economical or economic pandemic. The third is COVID. We know COVID started one year ago, more or less in a few months, but actually we are still suffering over it. Democratic pandemic, why you are still suffering of democratic pandemic? Or why you call it pandemic? Because there's no democracy. Some of the rich and strong countries still supporting dictatorship regime in different countries. And they keep silent on their atrocity. This number one. Economic pandemic, the multinational companies, which is controlling the economy of the richer country, is still controlling the economy of the poor developing country, even stealing the resources under the eyes and the ears and the mindset of the so-called democratic and advanced nation. This is what we suffer. And that's what I call, the, I call the three of them are pandemic affecting every country on the globe. That's why the world after the Second World War and before it started to make organization to, 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 to deal with such crises. United Nations came after the Second World War and many organizations inside United Nations, including the World Health Organization, which is dealing with the health side, including uh, the International Court of Justice, which is dealing with the differences or dispute between member states of United Nations uh, including an uh, international criminal court is not a part of the United Nations. Even some, some, some leading global countries are not in it, such as China, such as uh, United States of America, and so on. Then the world actually have Transparency International. You know what Transparency International is doing to deal with this kind of uh, corruption, this kind of bad governance? The Transparency International is dealing with the level of governance that your government is performing. You can find, if you go to a transparency session, see the listing of the countries from one to I think 150 or 160 or 170 and see where your country is put there. Fraud prevention and anti-fraud uh, conference and organization to deal with the thieves inside any country, okay? Interpol, everybody knows the Interpol because actually it's like International Criminal Police Organization. Uh, can we go back to the... Uh, uh, that's, uh, keep it for a minute. Uh, International Criminal Court is dealing with the people who commit, who commit, who commit genocide and crimes against humanity. And both International Criminal Court and the National Court of Justice are in the Hague of Holland, in Holland. Next, please. But in the case of Lebanon, it's affected by the three major problems which are affecting the whole world, which is the economic pandemic, a COVID, as well as democratic, plus Beirut explosion. So in Lebanon, we've got four, four deadly problems. Economy, democracy, as well as uh, the COVID and Beirut explosion. Next, please. Lebanon is not a poor country, like any other country. When Allah created the earth, and he knew in his knowledge that on the surface of such earth or planet, maybe a billion, two billion, five billion, ten billion, twenty billion people will be living on the surface of the earth. And underneath the feet of the individual living on earth, resources sufficient to as many people as they can live. The same happened to Lebanon. The same in Egypt. The same in Saudi Arabia. The same in UK. The same in USA. The same everywhere. A lot of resources. So never, never, never trust somebody who's telling you that your country is poor. He's undermining 
undermining the giving of the Creator to the people who are going to live on such piece of land. Next, please. Some of the wealth of Lebanon lies in the tourism industry, which is now only at standstill at home. Natural and adventure tourism, which is based on the seaside, mountain climbing, cedar forest, and, and others. Cultural tourism based on the presence of many castles in Lebanon, many castles, beautiful old places, better than many, many other countries, inscriptions, mosaics, temples, templates, and caves. People go there to listen, to see, to study, to observe the history, the mosaic of the history of humanity in Lebanon. The third one, the length of the seaside of Lebanon, which is nearly under 200 kilometers, which attracts many people to come and spend their holiday in this very nice and beautiful weather. Tourism, two. No, next one. Natural resources as well. Lebanon has got uh, agricultural products such as apple, peaches, oranges, citrus fruits, olive, olive oils, uh, olive and olive oils, human resources, which is extremely important. Nearly 7 million Lebanese, highly, mostly highly educated, experienced people in Lebanon, and this according to the census of 2018. And uh, besides this, Beside this, the diaspora, Lebanese community, which may nearly double the number of the, popula the, the, the population of Lebanon. More than 12 million people living in numerous countries in Latin America, Central America, North America, Canada, Europe, Africa, East and West Africa, South Africa, Middle East, Asia, and others. Even in some of these countries, like Latin America, the president of Argentina was originally Lebanese, and the president of uh, uh, Ecuador was also Lebanese. Next, please. Deep natural resources like water, res water reserve, oil, and uh, gas. And there are nature reserve and sanctuaries. Actually, there's many of them many of them in the north and the south. I'm just trying to put this on the table to tell anybody that don't come and tell me that Lebanon is a poor country. Maybe corruption, which led to bad economy, actually make it poorer than other countries. Okay, next please. How to deal with Beirut explosion? How to deal with Beirut explosion? Uh, steps of dealing with such explosion. First one, we have to make needs assessment. We don't jump emotionally, reactionally, without any planning. Needs assessment for the community, for the citizens, and for the infrastructure to measure the damage, the extent of the damage, and what we need to deal with such damage. That's number one. Number two, we have to make short-term, medium-term, long-term plans to deal with this disaster. Number three, making a national or supreme emergency council or committee out, made out of members of the state institution, civil society organization, private sectors. This is national or the supreme emergency council. Number four, making reconstruction roadmap. We have, after, after making the needs assessment, we need actually, after the shocking state or the shocking period, we have to make this kind of roadmap. Making reconstruction roadmap plan for the port, building infrastructure, residential, commercial properties, and others. Step by step by step by step. Number five, increasing, which is emergency. We have, we have to be increasing the capacity of the other two ports, which is in Sidon and Tripoli, plus the capacity of Beirut International Airport. Next, please. Number six, which is actually like a statement. We have to establish the principles of cooperation, communication, and building partnership between all the partners, all the stakeholders. What are the stakeholders? 
those stakeholders have to observe a cooperation, communication, and building partnership. The stakeholders are state institutions, because there's no government now, but there's some still government institution, private sector, local civil society organization, international humanitarian organization, international donor government, and UN agencies. Those five, those five stakeholders have to observe the principles of cooperation, communication, partnership between them. Next, please. What are our challenges when we deal with uh, Beirut explosion? The first challenge, which is there not only for Lebanon, but since maybe September 11th, banking system, banking industry, which is difficulty of money transfer difficulty, sometimes impossible to transfer money. Sometimes those institutions uh, classify some banks are actually dangerous. So even if you go down to the individual, to the organization, and to the banks, so the people who have the control of this banking system will be delaying any uh, money transaction to this country. Number two, there is no Hawala system in Lebanon. Hawala system being used in other countries to replace or to overcome or to bypass the difficult bank transfer system. And number three, difficulty in finding transnational companies to buy you the materials, whether aid material, food and others, food and non-food items, to send it to Lebanon because of the difficulties of shipment as well as the difficulties of landing your shipment into by, 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 by air or by sea or by road. Number four is the presence of nearly two million people, two million refugees in Lebanon from the Palestinian side as well as the Syrian side. I'm not saying that they are a threat, but you have to change them and utilize their capacity actually, and to make them opportunity for us. Number five, the acute on top of the chronic economic crisis, which underneath it is corruption. Corruption which is leading to acute on top of a long-standing economic crisis. Here I put to you two crucial questions. Two crucial questions. What are they? First one, will Lebanon be facing severe food shortage by the winter of 2020 because of the insufficient capacity of the sea and the airports or not? Because most of the food and the other commodities coming to Lebanon from Beirut port, and now Beirut port is at standstill. We only have Sidon and we only have the other one which you call it uh, Tripoli. They don't have the capacity. Will the nation face very severe shortage from uh, by, by water this year? This number one question. You have to ask yourself. You have to ask whatever left from the government, whatever constitute the uh, uh, state institution in the country. This number one. Number two question, which is crucial as well, is the air transportation will become extremely expensive, extremely expensive, extremely expensive, since there is difficulty in bringing aid material by road, north and east of Syria and south is Israel. There's difficulty to get all this shipment to come from these two countries. So it's either good by air or by sea. You cannot bring them by sea because the capacity of the Tripoli and the Sidon ports are very, very limited and very uh, uh, insufficient. Next, please. What are the suggested solutions? We talked about problems, we talked about challenges. Look, Allah, let us put a solution. Suggested solution. This should be taken by the stakeholders. Uh, we have got about six stakeholders. Let us talk about the first one. First stakeholder is the state institution. The state institution. The state institution has to identify the problems and to lay down the roadmap. 
identify the problem as you are a doctor you go to the doctor actually you tell him the symptoms he identifies the problem he tell you okay it's cough maybe chest infection maybe too much cigarette maybe it's chest pain it's too smoke too much smoking there's actually a nearly closure or blockage of the some of the arteries there and so on then the doctor after that will write you the medicine the right medicine to get you out of your problem if uh, a state the a state institution have to identify the problem then to look at the roadmap identify the problem by listing problems facing the local communities and defining out abilities or disabilities of the local organization who will be dealing with it we define the pro we found the problem but we, can't, we might see that the, the local community or the local organization have the, the capacity or does not have the capacity this is number one this is the problem drawing some number drawing the road maps that can deal with every component of such problem this will happen how by the stakeholders co coordination the local civil society organization private sector and sometime international uh, humanitarian organization of course with the state institution state institution on one side local civil society organization and the private sector and we can involve as well the international humanitarian organization it's number one the state institution role as a main stakeholder number two number two the role of local organization is very crucial because they are the first responder they are the first responder this, the, the local organization have to first of all believe in networking communication building partnership and not and not and not competing with one another this is wrong this is haram in the humanitarian field we have to follow the policy of what reconciliation and concession for the greater benefit of our own country for our own country for our own country. this is number a number b not to focus on the differences because there are too many different backgrounds in lebanon sectarian religious uh, historical uh, uh, cultural and 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 but focus on the national unity focus on the national unity national unity Number C, finding alternative temporary shelters for the affected people. To be creative solution in shelter making, because making the proper reconstruction will take years, as well as it cost billions of dollars. Number D, do not depend on firefighting response, as I mentioned earlier on, to the traditional donors. Please, for God's sake, Try to divide what you raised for humanitarian response into two parts. Make 30% of it to humanitarian response, which is emergency. In my own view, I would like even to reduce it to about 10 or 20%. And the 70 or 80 or 90% for, for actually supporting building the social infrastructure. Again, I'm coming back to the social infrastructure uh, and rehabilitation and temporary shelter and national unity and all these sort of things please brothers and sisters traditional donors yani understand with me or i stand with you that building infrastructure is as good as giving a full parcel more important spreading the message of national unity in lebanon is as good as giving full parcel maybe more important Number E, localization of humanitarian uh, work or aid, the Charter of Change. Charter of Change was one of the outcome of the World Humanitarian Summit in Istanbul, which was organized by the United Nations, Istanbul 2016. One of the most co uh, uh, important outcome of it was actually a Charter of Change, empowering the local community, the local organization, the local citizens to make them independent, not to make them depending on your funding enough is enough thank you next please uh, the third stakeholder is the private sector private sector here is the message for the private sector and listen to me 
Okay, supporting the private sector should be supporting the state and institution and civil to civil society organization program. Okay, that's a must. That's a mandatory. It's not a joke. It's not optional. Without this is the most important. I should put it in red, the red, 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 and the black and all this. Without having any financial or investment reward. Without having any financial, because at the time crisis, we don't want to fish in the stack from the stagnant water. It's really ugly for those businessmen who are trying to actually uh, use the opportunity to make their profit on the basis of the, 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 the need of the affected community or the disaster stricken areas. What we call them, they become war lords, economical war lords. Stakeholder number four, which is the Lebanese, the Lebanese diaspora. As I said earlier on, more than 12 million people, Lebanese people are living in different countries. Different countries. They started the immigration or the migration from Lebanon at the end of the 19th century. Okay, and more. The diaspora has to has to carry to carry the plan of the agreed national role and responsibility. In state and institution, which has been made out by state institution, local civil society organization, uh, private business, as well as maybe international humanitarian organization in Lebanon, carrying the agreed national role and responsibility laid down by state institution, civil society organization, and private sector. Diaspora role should not be what? Divisive. Divisive, divisive. Cut, 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 divide, divide, divide. On the basis of zonal, geographical, sectarian, political, or categorical basis. Should not, should not, should not, for God's sake. Those who will build Lebanon, who are, who are the people who are going to build Lebanon? Are the Lebanese. Wherever they are, whenever they are, we will go with the flow to other disasters, stricken areas. We might be leaving Lebanon in a year or two because there's no much funding, but who will be left behind are the Lebanese, whether they are diaspora or they are the local community in Lebanon. And one of the good examples of the diaspora impact is something called the Impact Lebanon Initiative. Very good one, started, I'm just mentioning it, to try to tell people actually that the, the diaspora community of the Lebanese people actually are, is doing good things. They put a target for 5 million and now they, they, they cross the 6 or 7 million. I have not checked the figure today. But my advice to impact Lebanon initiative, please, please, for God's sake, do not spend it on humanitarian response only. Make a material response be 10 to 20 percent. Do not go for the photograph. Do not go for the uh, for the for, for, for the what do you call it, the Instagram. Do not go to for the Facebook to show that we are the first. No, keep this 80 percent or more or less for building the national unity, for building the infrastructure of the country, social infrastructure of the country. This is stakeholder number four. Number five. Next, please. The international organization, they have a role to play. And this is my first statement to those international organizations. If you don't have a presence in Lebanon, you shouldn't operate, you should operate through local organization, Lebanese organization, or through another international organization. Now, my organization is X, does not have an office in Beirut or in any part of Lebanon. Why should I go and open an office? Why shouldn't I partner either with local Lebanese organization or I partner with another international organization existing there to save the setup money and the, running, the money of the running cost? And my message to such international organization is to focus on what? 
listen now because these are mature organizations they will understand what I'm talking they are not like that the traditional individual or traditional organization number one they should focus on peace building and community cohesion number two should be focusing on building partnership with local organization to train them to build their capacity and to empower them number c to strengthen the local civil society sector and local civil society organization because we do not want to depend on their funding forever number d is spreading the bridge building and partnership culture between the local humanitarian and civil society organization all this kind of philosophical change the cultural change and building this new initiative is very important to be done by the big donor organization number f if empowering and advocating for the civil society sector needs and number g not to be engaged for the was the reconstruction program because the reconstruction program will be very expensive we should leave it to the government because our money is limited this is my message to the international humanitarian organization last but not least which is a stakeholder number six the role of the religious institution very important and very powerful and very widely spread role the role is cross-cutting to all our activities cross-cutting to all our activities in our programs because of their popularity whether it's a church a synagogue a mosque a temples what you call it but they should have a very special message what is the special message should come from this religious institution number one protecting the social cohesion i'm just keeping saying repeating this many times many times many times because of the diverse differences in the culture and the history of the lebanese nation protecting social cohesion protecting the national unity encouraging their followers to do the following the worshipers to do the following spending more time efforts money to save lebanon number d focus on the message of social volunteerism to protect the existence of the state because if we don't come together maybe the state will collapse which is becoming very dangerous not only for Lebanon, but for the whole region, as well as for Europe as well. Number E, fighting extremism. The message is to fight extremism, uh, radicalism, uh, sectarian fragmentation, and terrorism. They will listen to the imam, they will listen to the priest, they will listen to the rabbi, they to everybody. Number F, is spreading the message of partnership. Partnership for what? For saving our country, saving our state, and saving our future and the future generation of our children. We are all partners in rebuilding and saving our country, Lebanon. Next, please. What is the roadmap for uh, that will be taken by the masses? We'll talk about six stakeholder problems organized stakeholder and six structure stakeholder uh, state institution local civil society organization uh, bu local businessmen uh, diaspora organization diaspora uh, international organization as well as uh, religious institution number seven here it is the masses the individuals what the individual should be doing next please to form what we call humanitarian groups. I didn't want to talk about politics or economy or whatever it is because I'm not expert in it, in spite of the fact we know what's going behind the scene. What are these humanitarian groups? They are popular groups created by the local citizens in every local district. Now, now, now we're going actually zooming at the depth of the infrastructure of the society of Lebanon. There are popular groups created by the local citizens in every street, village, neighborhood, town, and city. What is the role of these groups? 
يعني خلاص the role number one coordinating the humanitarian response and creating humanitarian response mechanism to deal with to deal and maintain a such coordinated response B spreading the message of peace the assurance and tranquility among the citizens C raising the slogan of national unity amongst the citizens communities and minority groups this actually the popular groups humanitarian groups humanitarian groups has to do this next please next please number d maintaining the social service provided service social services provided by the state and the government institution number e coordinating the humanitarian response with other humanitarian groups in the neighborhood village town and city levels doing all this Number F, to agree on general principles and terms of references to provide such a social service to every citizen without any discrimination. Number G is coordinating the distribution of humanitarian aid with the local organization, local municipalities, international humanitarian organizations and embassies. Number H, maintaining a smooth transport system on the neighborhood level as well as on the national level in coordination with other partners during state of emergency. This is what I suggest that you have this humanitarian response group on the local level. I mentioned at the beginning the Supreme Emergency uh, Council or Committee, but this is on the grassroots level. And the make out of these groups, groups, the composition of the MTN groups, first of all, made of members in the neighborhood of young men and young, yeah, young women and young people organization, okay, uh, members of a state institution in the neighborhood, members of security force in the neighborhood, members of economic institution in the neighborhood, members of local municipality in the neighborhood, and the, the, the people in the neighborhood themselves can, can form this. Uh, member of civil society organization in the neighborhood, members of religious institution in the neighborhood, members of uh, public figures, uh, no notable people in the neighborhood, and retired and experienced people in the neighborhood. So with these nine components, we can form a very effective, coordinating, cohesive body to organize and coordinate the work on the grassroots level. Next, please. How long this uh, humanitarian group will last for? It could last as long as needed to sustain peace, social cohesion, and national unity. We might not be able to put a limit to such period because the more we have this emergency, the more we need cohesive, coordinating humanitarian response group in the locality, in the neighborhood. To help the state institution and to help the people of Lebanon to come out of their crisis. Last, next one. In conclusion, in conclusion, we have to lay down the foundation of what? In about we talk about principles. Here we are talking about principles, huh? About principles to agree on this common framework of principle to get out of the Lebanese. Uh, crisis. First, principles transparency. Second, networking, communication, coordination, and partnership. Third, no, 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 and big no to politicization of humanitarian and social work. Number four is building national coalition. This would be the outcome of having this humanitarian response group. Building national coalition to bridge the social gap in different societies. Uh, number E, social impartiality and neutrality. We have to be neutral and impartial. In the coordination, no, we need more here, we need less here. Maintaining national unity and strengthening the social infrastructure of the country. You, 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 you kept, I kept saying and you kept hearing me talk about national unity, social infrastructure. People, the enemies of Lebanon and the enemies of humanity, 
and the enemies of human being are trying to divide your country into small clusters of people have no relation to one another. And this is what we have been seeing over the last nearly 10 years in the country like Syria, in the country like uh, Libya, in the country like Yemen, unfortunately, 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 and others and others, in the country like Chad, in the country like other countries, can look at others, in the country like the Democratic Republic of Congo, and so on, and so on, and so on. That's why I kept saying national unity and building social infrastructure of the country. Building peace and social safety. Social safety is very important for every individual, no matter his background or his background. He or she has the right to be protected and to, to live safely in my country, in our country. Building peace and social safety, making short, medium, long term plans to build the weakened what? Lebanese economy and fighting, fighting, fighting the social corruption which is eating the infrastructure of the country and eating the economy of the country. So I would like to thank you, all of you, for being with me today. And I'd like to thank also my colleague uh, Fatima Hersi. Uh, Omar Jamal, Sahar Riaz, who helped me in the researching and making the material, and in the media side, Ahmed Hazim, as well as Ali Shawab. And uh, I congratulate uh, the Muslim Ummah of the, uh, receiving the new Hijri year in about two days' time, inshallah. May Allah make it more peaceful and fruitful to all of you, not only to the Muslim, but to everybody, anybody, anywhere, to Muslims and non-Muslims as well. God bless you all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.